Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about 11 totes from seven brands. The Ophidia from Gucci, two totes from American brand Kate, Amelia and Lotus, three variations of the book tote from Christian Dior, the eCare Maxi shopping tote from Saint Laurent, the Andiamo tote from Bottega Veneta, Margot from the row and then the cat amongst the pigeons the lector tote in legato leather from joseph de clos i'm anna susa gonda and i produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying better quality from the get-go or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on high quality under the radar brands then my content is geared towards you i'm currently at the atacama desert in chile and the resort i'm staying in is nestled between two salt ranges and directly in front of me is one of the salt ranges it's um, overlooking the back of the bedroom i don't have anywhere else to record uh, the pool area has people the rest of the hotel has various seating spaces but there are people all, all around and i didn't want to inconvenience anyone and we have a couple of hours in the afternoon i now have uh, only 90 minutes to record this video it is absolutely sweltering and i'd rather be wearing um a bikini top but i just didn't think it would be appropriate so i'm going to try and get through this video very quickly um, or else i'm going to get uh, behind uh, with regards to my recording schedule so bear with me it is incredibly hot all of the totes i have chosen with the exception of the lector tote from joseph de clos are totes that have featured prominently um, online in magazines for example whether it's the best tote best work tote best summer tote they are totes that have featured prominently and i thought there would be a good representative selection of uh, the more aspirational totes the totes that uh, people know of uh, they might they have much uh, higher visibility than for example the lector from joseph de clos which as i described at the beginning it's the cat amongst the pigeons it is the king of the totes when it comes to using phenomenal quality leathers and exceptional craftsmanship the hardware the details of uh, the tote it is head and shoulders ahead of its competitors i know in the past i have spoken about two other brands uh, moreau and also moina that video was entitled battle of the totes i'm going to attach the video above uh, moreau would still be my number two confidently head and shoulders ahead of the pack would be the lector from joseph de clos the moina tote i still like but i'm having issues with moina at the moment i'm going to include the video where i talk in detail about what's going on with moina at the moment in the description box down below as and when we start to see what's happening with the brand then um, i will revisit moina but at the moment i've just put the brand on still pause so this video is essentially for anybody who would like the very best when it comes to a tote that's incredibly well made they've covered absolutely all of the bases and you're somebody who doesn't necessarily want a hyped up brand a brand from one of the known brands the hugely aspirational brands where you're typically paying for hype um, you're paying for the visibility of the brand you're paying for a fairly average level of quality of leather um, and in some cases fairly basic craftsmanship but if you don't care for that and you want to focus more on just the very best, this is definitely the video for you. The first tote I'd like to talk about is the Ophidia from Gucci. It's the cheapest. I'm going to work my way up uh, price-wise. It's priced at £1,250. I will uh, use pound sterling uh, for all of the bags, if I remember correctly, with the exception of the Joseph de Clos, which I will quote in uh, euros because it's a French based brand. But all the other brands, um, I looked at them in London. With the Ophidia, it's £1,250. It's a coated canvas tote. I have already recommended other alternatives to the known brands. I'm going to attach the video above. 
But out of the ones I looked at recently, it's coated canvas on the outside. It has uh, the suede lining or rather a fabric. It's not a uh, suede, it's a fabric lining on the inside. And then it has leather trimming around the edges and also the handles. It's coated canvas. It's from a known brand. Um, it's a little more on the sturdier side. I would take this tote over the San Louis from Goya, for example, when it comes to just the durability and uh, a slightly more sturdier product. What I really like about this tote, and um, I will highlight um, with other totes that are a lot more expensive, is just the edge coating. The edge coating is how they protect the edges. And with the Gucci tote, it's going to be a machine applied product. But I like the fact that their edge coating, which protects the edges, is thin, it's neat, it's consistent. And you don't necessarily see that with the more expensive totes. And I find that quite disappointing, considering you're paying three, four, five times the price of the Ophidia with the other brands I'll be talking about. But the edge coating is uh, applied in a fairly slap dash manner. So that's the uh, Ophidia. The next two totes I'd like to talk about are from American brand Kate. I've been asked about Kate together with Totem on a number of occasions. I will talk about them. I'll start with their clothes um, and just talk about the craft. But Kate is an American luxury brand uh, focused on uh, producing basics, uh, your, your elevated take of um, your capsule collection for, for your wardrobe. And they have uh, quite the cult following. What's really popular with Kate is their knitwear, their accessories, and also their tailoring. With the accessories, it's their bags. Um, the first tote that I was ever asked about was the Amelia. Um, the Amelia, uh, a fairly basic tote, it's uh, a textured leather on the outside, fabric lining on the inside, and then the two handles. There is another brand, Carolina Herrera, a Spanish brand, that have something similar. And I noticed it two summers ago, and I've never seen it uh, since. And I think they've discontinued it. Comparing like for like, I'd be more inclined to have gone with the Carolina Herrera. They are producing fantastic brands, that, uh, fantastic bags that nobody's talking about. The Kate Amelia tote is priced at £2,300. It's fine. I, I wouldn't have any hesitation recommending it. But what I do have an issue with is the second tote I've been asked about, the Lotus tote. And this is the one that's a lot more visible when people talk of Kate, their bags. And this is the one you'll see uh, a lot. And this tote is the one I recommend the least out of all of the aspirational uh, brands I will be talking about. I like the leather, the beautiful sumptuous suede that they use. I like the fact that it's also leather lined on the inside, priced at 2,400 um, pounds, but that's where it ends. Two things really stand out. Firstly, the edge coating. The edge coating is poorly applied. Kate is not um, a handbag brand, first and foremost. They are focused on clothing. And I'll talk in more detail about their clothing because I also think their clothing is fairly overpriced when you consider the details, um, the level of craft and work that's gone into sewing their clothes. But when you look at um, their Lotus uh, tote, they have subcontracted um, an Italian workshop, for example, Atelier, to produce the bags on their behalf. Very similar to what Lemaire have done with uh, Bonastria, a brand I recently spoke about. I'm going to attach the video above. If a brand, uh, and a number of brands are doing this, uh, Kate, Totem is doing it, The Row, where they expand their range of products from just clothing to accessories, um, belts, shoes, bags. So you buy everything, your entire wardrobe under one roof. It's perfectly normal. It's what you expect in business. But I think it's very important to partner up with someone who is very good at what they are doing. For example, Le Mer with Bonastre. I don't know who Kate have uh, coupled up with to produce their accessories, but the Lotus is, uh, unfortunately, I would say it's a waste of money and I would never recommend this tote because the leather is beautiful, but that's where it ends, as I mentioned. The edge coating is not very well applied. If you notice, I have looked at three different uh, Lotus totes from Kate over six months. And each time I've looked at them, there's issues with the edge coating. So it goes to show this is something that they haven't done very well. And then throw into that the strap is fairly thin. Um, it's out of balance for the size of the bag. Um, and even if you weren't to overload it, but to put things into it, the, the strap is too thin to take the weight uh, off the bag. With nothing in it, I was like, oh, this is not comfortable. It's too thin a strap. And then throw into the, the equation, the edge coating. You're paying 2,400 um, pounds for this. 
I don't think it's worth it. Your money is better placed elsewhere. Possibly even consider uh, going to one of the first custom focused brands I've spoken about, Atelier Rena very competitively priced they're using some of the best leathers in the market and you can get a comparable tote with leather lining on the inside for around the same sort of price possibly another thousand pounds on top but better craftsmanship the attention to detail the leather you will get will be superior to what you're going to get with kit uh, the next brand is christian dior with their book tote a legendary book tote uh, they first started with just the full canvas one and then as it's become increasingly more popular, they've increased the range uh, offering. So now you have the canvas, the fabric, and with the, the leather on the sides and the bottom of the, the tote, and then you have the full leather tote. With the, the, the original, the, the full canvas, just the, the fabric uh, uh, tote, it has nothing on the inside. It's absolutely open. And the brand told me it's because it's, it's an easy bag. What came to mind first and foremost was uh, a bag to put children's toys when you're on the go. There's no structure, there are no pockets or sleeves or anything. You just pop everything in there. You don't need structure to whatever you're putting into the bag. And that's priced at about two and a half thousand pounds. Next one up, the extension, you have uh, the fabric, the canvas on the outside, um, on the front and the back, and then on the sides and also the bottom, you have uh, leather. And that's priced at about 3,000, just over 3,000, 3,050 pounds. And the inside, you have a zipped pocket and then on the one side, you have an open pocket uh, with a stitch in the middle. So you have two open sleeves on the inside and that's all fabric on the inside. And then the next one up is the full leather. With the full leather, it's leather, the entire bag. And then on the inside, they have an incredibly sumptuously soft and smooth, um, what they call cashmere leather. It's suede. It's a beautiful uh, suede same as the other tote in that it's open with uh, one side with a zipped compartment and then on the other side an open a sleeve with a stitch in the middle so you have two open sleeves on the inside and that's priced at about 3600 and to me from when they first released uh, the tote with the original book tote i just thought this is a lot of hype you're paying for hype with this uh, particular tote it's very expensive for the very little you're getting basic material nothing on the inside they've now bumped up put in a bit more leather but i actually think there's a better brand a brand i have spoken about before colombo i'm going to attach the video above where i talk about their tote and they have something similar same sort of concept with the branding on the outside but theirs is far superior uh, on the inside better construction you have a lot more carrying capacity in terms of you have zipped pockets on both sides they're also detachable the straps you get with them um, it's a much better it's a superior product priced at 1900 euros and then throw into that it's uh, leather trimming around the, the the actual bag and then the handles are crocodile absolutely beautiful every time i go into their showroom in milan i always take a look at this tote because the crocodile just elevates it significantly elevates the whole look and feel of this particular tote and if i was going to buy uh, a book tote this sort of style i'd be more inclined to go with the colombo you're getting a much better product all around and then throw into it the full leather book tote 3600 a recent brand I've spoken about, Bonastre, they have my favorite uh, offering from them, the Tea Tote. Um, similar in terms, in terms of the shape, um, but a much better uh, product all around uh, when you consider the vegetable tanned leather that they're using, uh, the details of the strap, you have the additional pouch added in there, you have the hand stitch details uh, around the corners of the tote. It's a beautifully made product and priced at about 690 euros. You're going to get much better value for your money spending 690 uh, with Bonastre than 3,600 with Christian Dior. You're not going to get that amount of value or quality from the Christian Dior product. And just food for thought, the tea tote versus the book tote, same sort of concept. You just don't have the hype, but you have a much better product all around from Bonastri. The next tote is the eCare, the shopping maxi tote from Saint Laurent. When I saw this tote, I was taken aback um, because I've only ever seen it on social media. 
and I didn't realize it was actually made from a sumptuously soft lambskin. lambskin. It's absolutely beautiful. It's lovely to, to the touch. But the lambskin is incredibly delicate. And the, the bag I actually looked at was from one of their stores in London. And when I noticed the scuff, I tried to catch myself before I frowned. And the assistant noticed this and uh, their body language and demeanor changed because I, I was just, I was taken aback, but I, I tried to recover literally within a second or two. The lambskin scuffs incredibly badly. It's priced at about 3,600 pounds, if I remember correctly. If I don't have the right price, I'll include it um, uh, just next to the bag. It's incredibly expensive. Um, the, the piece de resistance they kept telling me about was the hand uh, engraved uh, YSR logo on the front. It's made from brass. It's solid. It's sturdy. It's heavy. You can feel it uh, when you touch the bag. It has the big strap. It's a big uh, tote. And then you open the inside and it's fabric lined. 3,600 pounds and it's fabric lined. I wanted to cry. On just the one side, you have a zipped compartment and it goes all the way down the full length of the bag. So you do get quite a bit of carrying capacity that's zipped away. There's a gold chain in there, which is attached to a pouch. You can remove the pouch and then the same strap can change the shape of the bag. So you change the whole look and feel of the bag. For £3,600, um, I think it's way too expensive. You are very much paying for the hype. It's a trend product. It's fashionable. People are talking about it. But you're getting leather that's going to scuff very badly. It's not going to look attractive. The wear and tear is not going to be good with that bag. And for 3600 I think it's a lot of money. Um, you're paying for that. And fabric lining, I just don't think it's, it's fair. They are charging you the most for very little you are getting a little bit of quality with the lambskin but it doesn't work with the shopping maxi tote it's something you take out it should take a beating but it's going to scuff really badly what i would be more inclined to recommend especially if you like the big uh, maxi tote uh, shape and look is another brand I've recently uh, spoken about, RSVP, a Parisian brand based in the third arrondissement. And they have a big tote called the Parachute, priced at about 1,500 euros, a fraction of the price of the, of the uh, Saint Laurent one. And you're getting a fantastic quality product. They're sourcing their leathers from um, the best tanneries in the market. Um, the bag itself is very well made limited runs the focus is very much on producing high quality products with high quality finish um, so i'd be more inclined to recommend this as a better price alternative and better quality better wearing tote the next tote i would like to talk about is from bottega veneta it's the andiamo and it comes in a number of sizes and i went for the large size uh, which i felt was simply too big between the large and the medium, there's a big gap. I think they should have something in between that. That would be a better alternative, but they don't have anything in between. I just think scaling it down a little bit. It's a very big tote. I'm five foot two in build. If I rolled myself into a ball, I could literally fit into this tote. It's a big uh, tote uh, that comes with um, a strap that's woven in. Uh, you can remove the the strap and then change the whole look and feel of the bag and then you just carry it with either the single uh, strap or you change it around so that you can carry the bag either as a crossbody or you can carry it over the shoulder but it it's fairly cumbersome to remove um, the the belt the strap within the the tote you can totally remove it as I mentioned and then just use the strap and use the strap as a belt it does look nice as a belt with the um, the, the, the hardware on the front. But what I noticed, and I looked at this without even commenting, and the assistant mentioned it of her own accord, and she said, the strap is a bit small, and a lot of customers think that it's, it's not big enough, it's not thick enough for the size of the bag. That's exactly what I thought before she even volunteered that information. And that's something I would be incredibly mindful of before buying it, that the size of the tote is too big for the strap in the middle, but you do have other carrying options. But I also think the strap, having tried the bag over the shoulder crossbody, I don't think it, it'll necessarily be very comfortable, especially if you load the tote. Are you going to really fill it up? Well, it has the capacity, but 
the heavier it becomes, the more uncomfortable it'll become, either with the attached strap or even with the, with the belt, whether it's over the shoulder or crossbody. I think the leather is absolutely exquisite. I really like the leather. It's beautiful. I like the Bottega in Trecciato. It's absolutely arresting. Um, inside is lined with the inside of the leather, very good quality, so they can carry, they can use the same um, lining that the leather has, the natural lining of the leather. On the inside, they have a mat, uh, base of the leather. And then there's also um, a piece of leather that is actually um, a zipped pocket. It's your zipped internal compartment for the bag and that can be removed when you remove the strap as well and then that means the bag is just one big cavernous compartment without the additional uh, pocket or sleeve which you can add or take away from the bag what i did notice and this is where the top two um that i'm going to talk about the andiamo and also from the road the margot this is a major disappointment for me because the Andiamo is priced at 5,730 pounds. That is a lot of money. And the edge coating at this level of luxury that Bottega Veneta is, it's super premium. So you're paying for the very best. It should be better. They should have paid a lot more attention to the details. And what I noticed is that around the edges where it bends in, if you uh, close the tote, it has started to, it, 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 it's rippled. And that, with wear and tear, will eventually crack. But it depends very much on how often you use this bag. If you don't use it, then you really won't have that issue. But if you're using this bag a lot, you're going to get the edge coating at some point cracking or starting to lift. Where you have the intrecciato, there's some bits where the edge coating actually spilt over. It wasn't thinly, neatly, consistently applied like the Gucci. If they have done what Gucci have done, they're the same family, use the same machine, then it would be a different product. At this price point, better edge coating, better all around product. Um, everything should be absolutely flawlessly executed. Beautiful leather, the edge coating, the hardware is fantastic, the details of the bag. There are a number of things that niggle about this this particular tote i really like the leather that's about it the design i like but it's a bit too big maybe a bit smaller but the edge coating really takes away it is better than the one above uh, the margot from the roll but the edge coating is something that shouldn't even be a discussion at this level of luxury at this price point so the next one up my final one within the aspirational brands is the the margot that everybody's talking about. It's touted to take over from the Birkin. Um, I mean, there's a lot of fuss made about this particular bag, the Margot. It comes in, in various sizes, but the ones people talk about as a comparison to the Birkin is the 15 and the 17. I have spoken about um, this tote before in the doctor's video. I'm not sure if I can still uh, attach more videos or I've exceeded my limit, but I'll include the video in the description box down below if I can't. With the the margot bag i will i said this in the video i'll say it again please do not pay full price for this tote if you can get it on sale on promotion and you really want it then buy it with a discount it is not worth the money that they charge for this bag it is a pure play on hype you're not getting a lot of value for your money look looking at the the one that i saw in the video i also mentioned that uh, all of their bags uh, are fabric lined on the inside and somebody did correct me um, and when I went back into the store to challenge the store and say you know you told me this they said no no it is correct all of the bags um, the 15 the 17 are all fabric lined with the exception of the bag with the straps attached on the inside um, and I think it's the 17 that is leather lined on the inside but all the other bags the 15 and the 17 are all fabric lined at 5,000 plus it's 5,000 um, I think 100 200 pounds fabric lined um, various types of leather I think that is an absolute scam and then throw into the equation I had a good look at the hardware when I first touched the hardware I could have sworn it was plastic and I had a really good play with it and I know security in the store were getting antsy with me for looking at the bag but I turned around and said it's 5,000 pounds are you telling me I'm not allowed to look at the bag, inspect the bag? The hardware is cheap. Um, it's catalog hardware. What you'll find is with the majority of brands in the market, they will use 
um, a catalog. They'll order their hardware from a catalog and the brands will modify it, either put um, tw uh, tweak the design slightly or put the, the brand's name on it, which is what the row have done. And they've gone for incredibly cheap hardware. Fabric line on the in lining on the inside. So what they have done as a brand is they have reduced their cost to ensure that they are producing this bag as cheaply as possible. They're offering you an incredibly cheap product and then placing a massive premium. Fair play to them. But I just think people should be aware this is what you're getting. The leather is fine. It is not the very best. I'd have expected them to have gone with one of the best tanneries. Their bags are Italian made. So I'm not too sure which tannery they have gone with. And then also throw into the equation, the edge coating. The edge coating looks cheap. It goes over the edge of the bag. What I would expect at a very minimum, the Gucci edge coating, what I showed you, or the direct competitor, the Lector from Joseph Duclos. If you look at the edge coating, it's incredibly thinly, neatly, evenly applied all by hand. This is what I'd expect from the row. But the row is producing a product that's made um, in workshops. It's mass produced. They're not paying attention to the details. They're producing a product which people are buying because they want to buy into the hype, uh, into the association, into almost an elite club. Uh, being part of the road, the Margot, being seen with it as the bag of the moment. But you're not getting value for your money. You're not getting any quality for the product. You're paying for an incredibly cheap product overall um, and paying a massive premium. And it's just, wow, I was really taken aback the more I, I really looked at this bag um, for this video. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in six months, whether it'll still have the same traction um, attention that it's commanding at the moment because it's a bag that's not worth the premium that they're charging and you're paying for for hype but if you're fine with that that's great but what I'd really like to do is introduce you to a tote that is worth the money it's priced at 3,300 euros and it should be priced well over the 5,700 that Bottega are charging or what the row are charging because you are getting um, some of the very best leather in the market that has been used to produce the tote. You're getting custom made, made to measure hardware. The level of craft, the details of this bag are exemplary. They are the benchmark, as I've mentioned, when it comes to luxury. Um, they are setting the pace and the tone and they're doing it incredibly confidently and they are well ahead of their competitors. The Lector uh, tote uh, comes in a couple of leather options. I'm going to be focused just on the Legato. Legato is Torreon leather, which is bull calfskin leather. In the past, Torreon was typically used to produce furniture. And then from about early 2000, Hermes became one of the first luxury brands to use Torreon to produce some of their leather goods. Think of their Clemence or Togo leather, for example. And this was during the time that Ramesh Nair was working at Hermes. He is now the creative director at Joseph Duclos and uh, the creator of the Lector Tote. When he left Hermes and joined Moina in uh, 2010, he introduced uh, Moina to Torreon and it very quickly gained traction and became popular with the other leather goods brands within the Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy group and uh, many of them are still using Torreon leather to date. Uh, why Torreon leather? Well, uh, bull calfskin leather, uh, the hides are bigger than calf or cow hide, for example. So you're able to create the big panels of the lector tote without any cuts or seams. So if you're using the smaller calf or the uh, cow hide, you'd need to uh, have a number of uh, cuts and seams to be able to join together smaller pieces of leather to, to achieve the big panels of the lector tote. The Legato is a Torreon leather, it's a bull calfskin leather, but it comes from a specific uh, breed of cattle that's found either uh, in the south of France or in Spain. Very few tanneries are able to create the Legato finish, uh, and the few that do uh, go on to become specialists in the leather. Joseph Duclos specifically sourced their Legato from French tanneries. What is Legato specifically? Well, it's a leather that's an assisted grain. They use a plate to stamp on a grain pattern to the leather. Ramesh likes more of your natural, your transparent leather. So what happens is 
um, once they've stamped on the grain pattern, it's then drummed for many hours. It's essentially tumbled for many hours. And in that tumbling, it helps to make the grain pack, uh, pattern a lot more irregular, so it looks more natural. But it's also able to really thicken up the leather and give it the round, round hand, the puffiness of the leather. And it makes the leather as supple. And then the, uh, the tannery will finish the leather with a semi-matte finish. Uh, that's just to highlight the natural look of the leather. It can look a little more modern um, in comparison to, for example, a more compressed look where it's shiny and it, it can look quite fake and synthetic. Um, it just makes it look a lot more uh, natural and modern. The Legato is going to age incredibly well. It's going to be absolutely superb. It's going to become even more supple and sumptuous. It's going to soften and it's also going to develop a sheen on the leather. Side of uh, the tote, you have uh, the buckles, the hardware. All of Joseph de Clos hardware is made to measure. It's all hand tooled and hand polished hardware. Every single piece of hardware they use on their bags, on their totes, on their products. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, the majority of brands will typically order from a catalog. I've spoken about some of the big brands, Riri, Lampo, Rakagni, uh, YKK, for example. And depending on your quantities, you can either tweak the, the shape they're offering, add your branding and so forth. The more you're ordering, obviously, the more you can do with those brands, but it comes from a catalog. It's machine made. Um, I do know LVMH, for example, I'd imagine Caring do have their own companies that sort out their hardware that are owned by the brands, but it comes from a catalog. Whereas with Joseph de Clos, and their totes are priced at 3,300 euros, you are getting made to measure, designed by Ramesh Nair um, hardware. It's hand tooled and it's um, hand polished. That is what I'd actually expect from the row, from Bottega Veneta when they're charging 5,000 pounds and above, but you're getting catalog um, mass produced hardware. What you also get with the tote is an optional Joseph de Clos um, charm, if you choose that's there for you to purchase. Again, it's hand tooled. Um, and it's uh, made to measure and all of their hardware is substantial it's weighted it's solid it's a mass of uh, of brass it's hollow in, and it's not hollow in the middle they're so well chiseled uh, if you look at for example the Diane the Diane messenger bag it's the clasp is like a piece of jewelry you can actually remove it I'm not saying do this but you could remove it drill a hole and you have a beautiful pendant that's going to look good it's going to last a long time very well made it's not going to tarnish and that is what you're getting for 3,300 from Joseph de Clos. and I would expect from the brands charging 5,000 even Saint Laurent better quality when you think of um, the price point they're charging more than Joseph de Clos, but you're not getting the same level of high quality uh, the craft attention to the details high finish exquisite leathers and of course the edge coating all around thinly neatly evenly hand applied using a mixture with beeswax I've spoken about that uh, with the Moreau tote and it's incredibly strong it's not going to move it's bulletproof you're not going to have the issues of cracking um splitting like you have with kate for example or edge coating that goes over the edges like we've seen with the row and to a lesser extent with bottega veneta it's thinly neatly evenly applied and there isn't any edge coating out of place always matte ramesh only likes matte um, edge coating as it looks more natural Inside of the bag, one big cavernous compartment, um, and then you have the natural finish of the leather, the suede on the inside, because it's such high quality, you don't need to line it. You just show off the natural suede. It's, it's beautiful as is because of the high quality of the leather. You have the pocket on the inside, and then the tension, the details around the strap. You can carry the toad uh, over your shoulder, uh, crook of your arm, you can carry it as is. It's unisex, um, it's a beautiful, heirloom quality tote. I really like uh, the khaki. I'm eyeing the khaki. Do any of my viewers have uh, one of their totes, two of their totes? Do let me know in the comments down below. They're absolutely beautiful. You're getting the very best quality when it comes to the leathers, made to measure hardware, um, exquisite details, the edge coating, um, high quality of finish with this tote. Um, and you're not even getting a fraction of that with the other totes I've spoken about. Bottega Veneta, The Row, uh, you have Saint Laurent um, coming in at the top end. You even have uh, Christian Dior with the book tote, the leather book tote. And you're not even getting any of the goodness you're getting from Joseph de Clos. It is my one wish with my channel that I can really influence my viewers to become 
a lot more discerning, a lot more demanding to expect to go for more when it comes to your money. If you're willing to forgo low hanging fruit, the aspirational totes I've spoken about, but you will look below the surface. Um, you will buy something that is the very best on all fronts. No hype, no fuss, no fanfare. It's only you who enjoys it, who knows what you've bought, the quality, the details of the bag. Um, and that comes with time, with experience, with exposure. And it's my wish I can influence more people to look beyond the hype and really focus on high quality, phenomenal craftsmanship and a high quality of finish to the product. So that's the Joseph de Clos, um Lector Tote that's leading the pack. It's on the same uh, level as all custom made totes. I've spoken about three brands so far. There's so many more to come. Uh, Atelier Rena, I've spoken about Durette Paris, uh, Autis in Japan. And what they are providing, uh, Joseph de Clos is providing um, as a retail brand at an absolute fraction of the price. Their tote is worth six, seven, eight thousand pounds when you consider everything you're getting. And you're only getting a fraction from the brands charging double, triple that price. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the Lector? I think it's absolutely arresting. It's a beautiful, beautiful tote.